life is strange. Uh, this game single-handedly saved my life. Like seriously, this game um, completely changed my life. You know, just back in secondary school, I mentioned a couple of times um, in the past in the channel. Um, I my secondary school, the final two years of my life was horrible. It's just it, it, some it, part of me probably is from my fault, but the rest is not really my fault. Stuff happens, you know. I'm not gonna go into it. I you know that was a really personal issue and wound that I don't want to reopen. But I can say it's a, it's a pretty dark time, and I was on a butcher doing something stupid. You know, um, doing stuff, um, yeah, and then one day, you know, I was looking on YouTube, and it's like, wow, these people are talking about this game, and I said, I'm just gonna buy the game, you know, download the game, and, wow, this game is, it's, 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 it's something, it, it's pretty good something, you know, you play this Max character, you know, just like me, like, in some way, just alone, and then you got this one loyal friend who always by your side, you know, you just feel like the friendship is so Loyal, you know, if nothing seems like se able to separate their friendship, but then they have to, have to go through so much stuff, you know, like how they want to have to pre prevent the storm. And spoiler alert, uh, you know, the storm came from the blue hair girl herself. Of course, you know, there's some mystery going around the town, and you find all this big culprit. Um, there's so much thing you can do, like so much choice you can make. This game is all about making choices, you know. The game always proclaimed that. Your action will have consequences. You can rewind time, which is like one of the superpower of the game, where you know you can re rewind time um, to get do some stuff. Although it doesn't impact anything throughout the game, but it's a really cool feature. So yeah, the storyline is pretty mysterious, you know. Like a school, this girl go to school, and then she find her long lost friend. There's some mystery going around. You find it. You get captured by the bad guy. Um, and you, and you have to find it to make the ultimate choice right at the end. I feel, I feel like this is basically a metaphor of what real life is. Like, every action has consequences, so why not just go for it and hope for the best? That's why this channel exists. Like, the game just impacted me in some way, you know, personally. And another way is that this game impacts me to make a YouTube channel. If it wasn't with this game, I wouldn't be even be here talking right now. Every action and consequences, that's what I write in my about section. Every action and consequences, but I'm ready to face it. Bring on whatever challenge you have. Just like Celeste. Uh, the perseverance. The one that persevere will conquer right at the end as well. So, yeah, life is strange. It has a lot of meaning to me. Although it's some, got some cringe factor throughout the game. But it doesn't stop the game from being really good. Now, I'm not a big horror game fan, like, I'm not a coward, okay, I'm not a scared ready guy, I can play professional horror games, but horror games not my thing, like, all you do is just go around, find stuff, and then just, you know, complete some puzzle, and then just walk around, and then wait for a jump scare, and then keep on doing it, and blah blah blah, really bad storyline, confusing one, those are the reasons I don't want to play horror games. Um, Resident Evil 2 is not one of them. Resident Evil 2 managed to strike in between. Like, it's not too long and not too short. It's not too hard and not too easy. Heck, like, even if you play on the hardest difficulty, the game is not even that hard. And you, I, you, you can play as two characters, Leon and Claire. Um, each character have their own set of story. You know, they, sometimes they will intertwine with each other. That's what I love about this game. You know, you can go this way as the Leon, but then you play as Claire. You go to different area and remember this particular area, and it makes the game pretty enjoyable, memorable. Like you go to the police station, the sewer, and then the lab, and then the train station at the end. Um, that's why I love this game. Like Resident Evil One, you know the game is pretty brutal for the most part. One mistake and you will be reloading a checkpoint. Um, yeah, the game has lots of problem. First game syndrome. Resident Evil Three pretty much borrow everything from Resident Evil Two. I'll be shorter, Code Veronica, um, went off way too long, Resident Evil Zero, um, also went a little bit too long but not as long as Code Veronica, 
so yeah, Resident Evil 2 just struck everything in a medium, the perfect formula. It was like the Capcom knows what to do, how to make a good sequel, and they managed to excel with it. The puzzle aren't that complicated, I managed to get through it pretty easily. The game section, the zombies, the bosses aren't that tough as well. I have fun going through the bosses. Um, yeah, Resident Evil 2, if I were to pick one of my favorite horror games, Resident Evil 2 will always be here. Number 8, Uncharted 2. I really love the Uncharted series, so I've been playing the trilogy, the fourth game, and also the Lost Legacy, so around back in 2010. So I'm somewhat of an Uncharted fan. They watched the movie, um, let's not talk about it. The first game, lots of problems, and that's, I mean, I can agree with everyone that Uncharted 2 fixed everything, the problem of the first game. You know, the, like, every, Let's face it, the first thing I want to talk about Uncharted 2 is the train section. The beginning of the game, Nathan Drake was just stuck in his train, you know, climbing up, the train is falling apart, and then you had the flashback, and then you see how it all happens as the game continues on. You went to Istanbul to steal some st the oil lab, I think, in the museum. You go through Borneo, the dick chapter, which is my personal favorite. Uh, you go to the Nepal area, in this urban area, city thing, where everyone that you had to run away in the back end with the back end cross travel and all the way find the temple in the end it felt like a blockbuster movie like I know that it's a, like an Indiana Jones movie but every level, every part of the game just felt so fun to traverse through everything just felt so satisfying the character development is enhanced this game is where I really respect Nathan Drake and his friends and the characters uh, the storyline felt so seamless um, it felt so like smooth transition from one part to another. Like every character you really want to care for, that, every character, although some of them end up meeting a demise. Um, the controls are more refined compared to the first one, which the first one did not age well, but the second one still age well to this very day, and that says something. The combat mechanic is fun, um, the location is stunning. What else I could say? Um, that I haven't said, oh yeah, multiplayer, never play much of multiplayer. A lot of people say multiplayer is pretty fun. It sets a standard that um, no, uh, no other game can achieve. Uncharted 2, simply a beautiful game. Um, we're not going to get another game like this anymore, so enjoy this game while it lasts. Yes, Uncharted 2 is the best one, better than 3, better than 4, better than Lost Legacy. Anything else, just, just the best action adventure game. Number 7 is Sonic Adventure. Sonic Adventure um, is a Sonic 3D game, 3D Sonic game done right. You know, Sonic controls like a charm. This first transition into 3D felt so perfect, the controls are very smooth. Although there's some hiccups here and there, but some of them for the most part controls pretty well. You know, like the really go mechanic, um, really nice, spin dash mechanic, really nice as well. Um, the Running around mechanic also really really smooth control. I don't have I don't have any trouble going through some any of the section at, at all with the Sonic controls. I feel like Sega Sonic Team managed to perfect the the control for the characters. Even though there's a little bit hiccup, I love the fact that you can play as different characters: Sonic, Amy, Knuckles, Tails, Gamma, and Big the Cat. Every characters have their own play style. Tails with the racing one, Amy running away from the robot, Gamma with the action. Sequence which I really love, Knuckles with the treasure hunting stations, which is not too complicated, unlike Sonic Adventure 2, and Big the fishing level, not that bad, shut up, I don't care what people say, Big the fishing level is top notch. Yes, I actually love Big Big's fishing mini game. Deal with it. Um, something that Sonic Adventure 2 never do, um, Sonic Adventure 2 only, just like 3 play style, cross 2, sorry remote. I don't know what Sega is doing. Every part of the level have just the personalities. Um, you know, there's some flashback to Tikal and the Echidna tribe. We really love it. You don't see all this in Sonic Adventure 2. So it baffles me that everyone just seems that Adventure 2 is better than it's the best 3 Sonic game, which I, I'm very confused. So yeah, if they were to plan to remake Sonic Adventure 1, I hope they do it. The only thing they need to perfect is the controls. Please deal with Sega, please.
Number six is Cuphead, another fun run and gun game. Not just a normal run and gun, a really fun, unique, fascinating, fantastic masterpiece run and gun from an indie developer. You know, you read through their history, you know, the developer had to like sell all their stuff, you know, the one point in their life was like, just like Celeste, is it all worth it doing all this? But they press a view and what we got is a complete masterpiece. Um, everything are hand drawn, just like 19. 30s, 40s cartoon, really, really charming. Every character has a personality. Cuphead, Mugman. I always play as Mugman. Um, every part of the, it's like a boss rush game. Fine by me. I love Hollow Knight. I love Cuphead, so that's the reason I, I put this up here. Um, all the bosses are pretty fun. You know, you figure out the tactics, figure out the transformation every time they, you reach a new phase. I really enjoy. It. I have fun playing through that, except for Doctor Cal. That thing can burn straight in hell. Um, every part of the game felt so fun. You know, the different aisle had different personality, different location had different backdrop, different theme around them. Really, really fantastic game. The characters are just can choose like a dream parrying shot, the bullet shot, equating different charms. The spray shot is still my favorite one, along with the 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 boomerang shot thing. Um, those are two of my favorites, and also this thing that you. Literally unleash a big charge attack. That was that's my favorite charm as well. Uh, did play the DLC. Not gonna spoil it because the first game, the f the base game is already so perfect that those who haven't played, oh, oh you you owe yourself a favor. Please buy the DLC. Support the developer. The game is simply perfect. Um, it just excels in every way possible. Um, the carpet show is pretty nice as well. Although I never watched the entirety of it, but I respect what. They try to do with the show as well. Pretty fun game, pretty really fun franchise. I don't think they're gonna make a Cuphead 2, but hey, eh, this is already a really good game. No need for Cuphead 2. Shower Night 2 still need to happen. Number 5, this is where we entered the top tier list. We have Paper Mario at Thousand Year Door. Now, I'm not a big RPG fan. I played like a couple RPGs in my lifetime, you know, before the channel existed, but not, nothing that I will proclaim as being my favorite. That is until I played Paper Mario Thousand Year Door in 2021. I don't even know where to I begin. Like, you know, you have this new storyline here, and instead of Bowser being the constant bad guy, you have this new threat that looms around the, the area, you know, this legendary story with a thousand year door everything f is made of paper machete whatever everything just just f made of paper it looks so cute everything looks so stylish everything has a sense of energy to it rope pot glitz rail partially heights keyhole key a uh, twilight town every part have their own personality and thanks to the fact that everything just made paper it, it's just it's just so perfect. It's like Cuphead. It's like, it's so perfect. I I can't describe what else I can describe it. Um, the characters are really likable. Mario, Goombella, Yoshi Kid, Flurry, Admirer, Bobbery. All of them have their own backstory. All of them have different mechanics. And speaking of mechanics, the gameplay as an RPG is pretty fun. They managed to mix Mario and RPG so perfectly well. Like there is Paper Mario 64, but Tales in Your Door takes it to the next level. And I'm not kidding with the fact that I was smelling, you know, the paper, you know, can jump on them and use the hammer to like do all this cool maneuver, you know, skill points, the flower points, level up. It's so fun. You know, I don't want to stop like like other RPG. I don't feel tired of grinding for experience point. Every needs and cracker, every needs wall, floor and wall, every fishbowl and potato, every house and basement hotel, everything just felt so perfect. The game has different sense of humor, everything, characters are mostly likable, um, Bowser himself is pretty funny as well, you know, or you try to unravel the mystery. Wow, Thousand Yudo is, if there's one RPG you want to play, Make this one your first one. I I, I just love it. And, uh, it. It's just perfect. I don't know how to say. Um, yeah. So glad they released a remake, remastered the game, new version, so that new audience can play it.
for being a really fun RPG, it's on the spot in number 5. Number 4 is Ace Combat Zero. Um, many people say Ace Combat is just like a you know, typical flight game, you know, it's not a simulation, it's not a realistic flight game, it felt, it is uh, an arcade flight simulator combat game, an arcade combat game with arcade physics. That's what Ace Combat is all about. And adding on with a really nice storyline in each game, and also the fact that the number series are connected by each other in the, the canonical order in the Strange View era. The Strange View is the fictional world similar to Earth where the Ace Combat event takes place. It's like if you're a law law person guy, you like story, deep story, Ace Combat is the one that you should play. The Holy Trinity, Four, Shadow Sky, Five Unsung War, and Zero Balcony War are regarded by many as the best one. Also, you can toss in Ace Combat 6 for its liberation, but the three and the places you do are the ghosts of a series. Characters are likable, lots of memes, uh, you raise a different location, you know, you can, there's this radio chatter that constantly appear every time, just show that people just, you know, admiring you, people scared, the enemy scared of you, people just asking for help. You like you feel you're in a big battle, even though you're not in a big battle, you, you know, you feel like you're in the cockpit with everyone else fighting some of the craziest stuff ever happened in the game. See, I don't, my words cannot describe enough, but if you haven't played it, please do so. Ace Combat Zero is such a fantastic game. It's a fantastic series. Although Ace Combat Zero fell down a little bit, I, I still hope that Ace Combat will be better. I can't wait for Ace Combat 8 whenever that comes out. Um, can't wait for that to happen. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, fun as well. Um, yeah, just avoid Ace Combat Advance. That game sucks. Uh, down to the top 3, we have Crash Bandicoot 3 Warp. The best out of the Crash Bandicoot trilogy on the PlayStation 1. Not because, not just because it's really easy compared to the first two games. Like the first game, you die, you have to start from this specific area. You know, each save point are pretty scarce. The second game lets you save from time to time. But the game also has some rough edges. Crash Bandicoot 3 irons out everything, all the problems with the first two games and perfected the formula. Crash 3, 3 is introduced, introduced you multiple times in the era, like Medieval Time, the Futuristic Time, the Great War China Time, Pirates Time, Egyptian Time. It adds really fun energy, adds different replay value because if levels at each location are different, provide different, like completely different energy different, atmosphere different stuff for you to explore like as opposed to Crash Bandicoot 1 and 2 you go from forest to all the way to the factory area um, sometimes in space but Crash 3 you go from here and then you it went through different periods of the time Crash with a normal running level and then sometimes Coco with the boat level and then riding the tiger and sometimes Crash with the bike level as well they all have different level, different gimmicks that's separate from each other, it doesn't feel like you're playing the same thing over and over again. Crash Bandicoot 3 is also pretty easy, like I never get a single game over in the entire playthrough. Granted, I never get 100% or everything, I never go for the relic, so it might just be that, but the base game is pretty easy, the game is really enjoyable. For newcomer, I highly recommend playing Crash Bandicoot 3 Warp, one of the greatest platform on PlayStation 3, PlayStation 1. Um, yeah. Number two, this might become as a surprise. Outrun 2006, Coast to Coast. What you so what? What is a racing game in on top here? Simple. It's not just a typical racing game. It's a racing game where you drive a Ferrari. A racing game where you don't even go by the actual physics. You can. Because this game is all about drifting. You'll be going sideways for the most part. There's a corner, tap the brake and drift. There's your corner and hairpin, drift, turn and drift. That's all the mechanics of the game and that's the result. This game is pretty fun. And they drive the different Ferrari that you can never drive in real life anyway. Across the stunning location, across far away from your life problems. Sometimes when I have stress in my life, um, 
I always turn to this game, you know, go to the ocean, go to the forest, go to this ancient city, go to this hill, hilltop area, go to this waterfall area. My mood just feels so much better after I play it. Like I could just throw all my stress behind, you know, as the I can't go at really like close to 200 kilometers per hour. All the problems are behind me. I just keep on going, drift around different area. Like people tend to say, like, oh, this guy is pretty weird for associating his life with video game. But sometimes video game teach you something. And in this case, all one teaches me to relax and just take a drive, have problem drive, your mood will be better, and outrun embodies that spirit in me. Um, you know, just I also had the habit of take my actual car, I drive around the neighborhood, and then my problem is just I feel so much more stress free. It's a personal issue, and no one will understand it, but I understand myself, so that is the most important. That's why it's number two. I work for you, number one, but someone is better than this one. And that game will be GTA Vice City. Do I have to say anything else apart from the fact this game is a masterpiece? Yes, there are a bunch of GTA games released after that, San Andreas, 5, 4, and the upcoming GTA 6, but nothing holds a candle on GTA Vice City. The first reason? This game takes place in the 1980s, an era where people proclaim to be the best era, best when life was at its best, when life was just so simple. And every time I play GTA Boy City, you know, I'm a 90s kid, I'm a late 90s kid. I was, I, rem I got reminded that whole life was so much better. People going to the club, people just walking around this area, when things just so much easier, you know, you don't have all this real world issue to worry about, you know, you don't have to worry about pretty much anything other than just trying to eat, get a job, survive. There was stuff. Life was so much better. People weren't judgmental with you. Um, people just wouldn't be prejudiced, stereotype people. There's no sense of people being rude at you. You can be whoever you want and just live on with it. Case in point, Tommy Rossetti, rest in peace, Ray Liotta. There wouldn't be another game like White City. Like they could remake the game. Oh wait, they did. But it would never be the same experience as what Ray Liotta able to do. He's the reason I love Tommy Brissetti as a character. It's probably my top five favorite Tommy, top five favorite GTA characters, right ahead of CJ and Claude. Yes, yes, I, I think that's far fetched, but I don't care. That's my opinion. Drive some of the Rico, you can hear some of the music, the great music of the past. There's a reason people say the songs, the music are from the past are still the best compared to the trash we have nowadays. And I agree with it. 
I there's a radio station I hear all the time that plays 90s, 80s, early 2000s music, and I can fully agree that the early music from the past are still at the best. You know, MXX, Flash FM, V Rock, Wow Style, and this one called Radio Espantoso. They just plays on the masterpiece. Um, sometimes I'll just go into the car. Not gonna do any mission, drive around the area or just stop at the site, enjoy the scenery, and then listen to the music they play. Oh yeah, the music, the feeling just hits so perfect right in the heart. Like sometimes I would just sit there, listen to the character in the car, Tommy Brissetti in the car, and I just drive, you know, listen to music, wipe on the music, and to cry because my goodness, the music in the past is so good. Like why can't we have things like this anymore? You know, those type of feeling. It really sucks that the you know the new version quote unquote even exists. Most songs are pretty much gone, you know. Unless you play on PC, there's no way to get back the music. Um, so much stuff wrong. Um, just like what is wrong with the reality of the actual world. You know, I would take the car in this game, drive around, just mesmerizing about how life was so much better because I was there in the late '90s and life was indeed better. It, it all just felt so inner peace, you know. I wish we could go back in time, experience the late 90s, early 80s. Those are probably the best era. And I, I'm kind of upset that GTA, you know, Rockstar never made another one taking place in the 90s, you know, my era. You know, we go to 80s. Why can't we go to 90s? Yeah, that's, that's kind of weird. We never have a 90s one. GTA 3 and... I don't think so. Why is it a son of yes, no, four definitely not, and five for sure no. And I kind of kind of said that GTA 6, you know, despite going back to White City, it's still in the modern era, which is why Rockstar, why? So yeah, um, this game is I hold wholeheartedly hold this game very close to me. Nothing can ever top this game you know just something that just cause 2 wasn't able to do you know just cause you can cause chaos but you don't have those 70s 80s but unlike GTA Y City you can cause chaos and then just stay and linger around in the setting the 70s 80s setting and that, and that is the reason this is the greatest game the f my favorite game of all time whenever forever the end <sighs> wow i spent already an hour talking about the entire 24 games like Wow, I just couldn't believe I can talk this long and make it better. I didn't even have a script next to me apart from some numbers, you know, the list I make. But other than that, no script, nothing. And I can't even believe that I can even talk about this long and in a smooth manner as well. Smooth operator! You know, um, this shows that I did play all the games. I love them. And the reason it's in my shelf collectors, um, 150 games, like around 150 games on my shelf and but it is nothing compared to the shelf of thousands of shelf from many collectors like they could fill the entire room with a bunch of shelf and tons of games that I could never ever achieve well I'm useless anyway that's all I gotta say with this 24 list and unfortunately sorry for all the games that did not make it into it those are honorable mention and then those that did not make it into that list also will be in your own honorable mentions it's hard to make decision okay it's hard to talk about every game extensively i could maybe i want next time i'll do a top 100 game who knows how long that would take i i'm down to it but let for now let me know your comments below your favorite game do you agree my opinion do you play all those games which game do you love the most let's have a peaceful discussion and if you haven't already comment below your opinion on um um you can now just your list i want to see yes anyway that's all i gotta say thank you for watching and have a great day